thoughts. So he was quite inspired by He you. absolutely galvanised me. I forgot all about career. But I re mm. From that point onwards, I'm, I'm now 61. I've never had a career, a proper career mm. after that because I, I wasn't going to prostitute knowledge to make money. Mm. I was going to... I just had to develop a new world view, a new yeah. theory for everything. And you had the seeds of it already, though, didn't the you? Seeds were already there, but I, I needed to be triggered. Mm. So I walked out of that interview, and I, you know, he was the most profound influence in terms of science in my life, was Professor Gareth Owen. I've never forgotten him. Mm. And he, I, I, I went away from that interview with this resolve to, to, to create a new theory. To, to take knowledge further, mm. okay, and that's when I remembered the vortex. Okay, right. But then I started to work on this vortex theory for subatomic particles. I realised that it wasn't the atom that was a vortex of energy. I realised it had to be the subatomic particle, because when that when the yogis made that statement in the nineteenth century, the atom hadn't been split. They thought the atom was the smallest particle. Right. So. I then applied the vortex idea to, to the, the electron and the proton. But, but when I discussed it at the end of my first term at Queen's University of Belfast mm. with a physicist, he pointed out a problem. He said all vortices have an axis of spin. You know you have a whirlpool like this, it's a conical vortex right. down the plug, plug hole. You know, you've, okay, you've yeah. stuck your big toe down the vortex when the water's going out of the baths. So, I mean, maybe you've done that. I have, but, no, you know, but you know, you watched it going down and it's, 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 it's a conical vortex. There's an axis of spin. So the water is spinning around. Yes. A, 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 and then how, an does the, how does the big toe affect the, the it vortex? Doesn't. It's just, it's, I, I'm just saying, if, 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 as, a, as a child, I mean, as a little boy, it's to stick my big toe in there. I'm sure water. you did. Yeah. So, so the, the, the vortex of spin, you're explaining that to me. It's going down an yeah. axis. Yeah. But what the physicist said to me is that the subatomic particle cannot be a vortex because there are no poles. Right. There's no axis of... There's, there's, they're, they're perfect spheres without poles. Okay. And uh, a vortex has poles, a north, sol and north pole and a south pole at either end of you know, where, where the spin is. Mm. So that crashed my theory. I gave up then. I was just so disappointed. You gave up? I gave up. And I, there was an amazing festival happening on Bel in Belfast, mm. the jazz festival. So I just sort of got into the music and I was told, I, yes, to me, the guy had blown my theory out of the water at the first post. <laughs> So you gave up, how long did you give up for? Uh, a month or two. Okay, and then... Well, actually, no, a few weeks, because this was early December when I mm -hmm. had the meeting. And then I went home and back to Cornwall. Mm. And we, we boys were billeted in a caravan with a friend of my father's called Harry, who had come down to Cornwall, mm. okay? And I want to give you something and show you exactly what happened. Okay. Because this was, to me, this was the major breakthrough. You know, people have got vortex theories in physics, but they don't realise that your model has to fit what is known in physics. Right, so what is So I had to overcome this problem. Mm. But the, the prob I didn't overcome the problem. The problem was overcome for me, just by what happened in my life. And this is what happened. I'm going to give you this ball of wool. Harry wanted to wind a ball of wool from a hank. He had this hank of wool like this, and he asked me to hold out the hank of wool right. whilst he wound the ball. Now, I want you to start winding the ball. So there I was, sitting in the caravan, holding this hank of wool, whilst Harry wound the ball of wool. And as I looked at the ball of wool being wound by Harry, I saw a vortex. I saw Harry was winding the wool, which to my mind represented light or energy, in a spiral, a three-dimensional spiral. But he kept changing the direction of winding bit like all the time. And I realized, hey, the ball of wool is a vortex, which is a perfect sphere, and it has no pole, measurable poles. It has no measurable axis of spin because... The axis of spin is changing all the time. Right. Do you see? Look, 
the direction of spin keeps changing and changing and changing so you can never measure it okay and science is all about measurement and therefore I realized the ball of wool is the perfect model for the subatomic particle ah. Okay. And this is the model I've worked with ever since. So I went back to Belfast with this model. I showed it to the physicist <laughs> and they were so excited. They realized, my God, this guy's cracked it. And they invited me to join the physics department. Right, okay. But I didn't. Why? For two reasons. Professor Owen had said to me, that you know we had to develop a theory for the joy of doing it not as a profession so I resolved that I was not going to become a professional physicist I had to be like David, I, I, I'm Einstein. sorry you're gonna to have to start that again because you're really distracting me with your wool okay let me finish winding the ball of wool are you still using that well I'll just pick it up from time to okay. time I resolved I could could put it away now if I finished it when I went back to the Queen's University of Belfast and, and showed my ball of wool model to the physicist, he was very, very excited. Mm. And he invited me to join the physics department, mm. you see, and swap over and do a degree in physics. Uh, but I refused. I, I, I said no, because I didn't want to become a professional physicist. I had to do it as an amateur in the spirit of Einstein. Einstein wasn't a professional physicist. And also, that in the spirit of Professor Gareth Owen's, um, you know, impassioned, you know, discourse, and the whole thing was to do it for the joy of doing it. I had to be an amateur. My father was an amateur scientist. Okay. I had to stay as an amateur. And there was another reason I didn't do physics professionally, didn't do a degree in physics, but read it at university for myself. And that is that when I was at school, I kept adding my multiplication sums in my maths lessons. And at the end of every maths lesson, I had to hold out my hand for the ruler. They wrapped my knuckles <laughs> because I wouldn't learn my multiplication tables. And I was threatened with the cane. So by pain, I was put off mathematics. Mm. I hated the subject. Well, I'm not a psychotherapist, so coming back to this theory, I'm just wondering what the to, to explain to the uh, everyday listener and the viewer here what is the significance of the ball of wool well the ball is a very very compact wool a form of form of wool mm. so if you imagine this beautiful yellow wool as energy as light yeah. the light is spinning but it's now very compact but if I start unwinding this ball of wool very quickly we fill the room with wool. I, I'm getting you tangled with wool. We're all in this terrible tangle now. So it goes on and on, and you'd fill the whole room with wool. So once you unravel the vortex of energy, yes. you release huge amounts of energy. Okay. And this is E equals MC squared. Right. Okay. So we see visually E equals MC squared. It's just, it's, it's unraveling these balls of energy. Okay. So, um, how does the this... nuclear explosion? Right. Were there any other eminent scientists that can help explain what you're talking about? Yes, one of the greatest mm. scientists in the 20th century, great quantum physicist, was Richard Feynman, okay. and he's another great influence in my life. And what he said is that the laws of inertia have no known origin right now let me explain that in simple language when you kick a rock you hurt your toe mm. because the rock is so inert it doesn't move right. not like a football mm. okay so mass has inertia and that's the mystery of mass why it stays put resists change mm. okay now spin creates inertia the spin of a gyroscope res on a ship in the plane, in the horizontal plane, mm. resists the, the tilting of the ship in the wave, so it stabilizes the ship. Right. The spin of a pebble on a pond resists the, the twi twist this way and that way. The spin in the horizontal keeps the pebble in the horizontal, so it skips over the surface of the pond. So it's the spin that creates the inertia. So immediately I 
I, I, my reply to Richard Feynman, well, I know the origins of inertia. It's spin. Okay. So How I began to see that? this. I began to work my way through physics and things that scientists couldn't explain, mm. I could explain. Okay. Richard Feynman said, of nuclear energy, we have the formulas for that, but not the fundamental understanding. We don't know what it is. Well, I know what nuclear energy is. It's the vortex energy unraveling. Okay, interesting. Okay. And there are a number of other phenomena that you can explain through your theory, Absolutely. Your, your science of consciousness, yes. or your spin theory. Yes. I developed this, I, develop, I, I can explain matter and antimatter, electric charge, magnetism, I can explain gravity, I can unify gravity into a quantum theory, I've got a whole new quantum theory, right. and I integrate gravity into this, I can bring together Einstein's theory for gravity and Newton's theory for gravity, and show they're both seeing two sides of the same coin. Very interesting. So, uh, talking about quantum theory, this is something that a lot of people can relate to, because it's mm. been bandied around a lot, that mm. term. Mm. In simple terms, what has quantum theory revealed about life? And how does your theory develop on this? Quantum theory simply says that energy is in little quantities. Mm. It's a particle theory for energy. Okay? And what the quantum theory at the moment does is it describes energy in the waveform. Okay? Mm. And this is very natural because most physicists are men. And in the Talmud, the Jewish Talmud, it says we don't see the world the way it is, we see the world the way we are, so we tend to project ourselves on the world. So it's only natural that men just see spunk everywhere. The waveform of energy is like sperm. See, it's a men just see sperm. They completely overlook the ovum, which is the feminine form of energy. So physicists in quantum theory are trying to explain the whole universe in terms of the masculine form. Right. But when you study Hermes, as I have, Hermes says that male and female duality exists at every level of the universe. Mm -hmm. So we have to look for male and femaleness or masculinity and femininity at a quantum level. Right. And what I've done is I've brought in the quantum, the sex into quantum theory. Excellent. I've got subatomic sex. And what I'm showing is the ball of wool is the feminine form of energy. But most of the people I teach my physics to are women. Okay. surprisingly okay and rightfully so because this is your physics this is the physics for the female the vortex is like the ovum it's spherical it's receptive mm. you see so the way waveform of energy drives into the, uh, the, the the vortex form of energy the masculine form which is light drives into the feminine form which is matter mater mother even the word matter means mother okay okay yeah and pushes it forward in wave motion. And that is wave-particle duality explained, just like that. Right. So Which again is one of the greatest mysteries in quantum theory. Okay. So I, I'm still a little bit woolly, if it, as it were. This is a about, woolly string theory. Yeah, okay. It's about a woolly theory, <laughs> not a string theory. <laughs> I'm a little bit woolly about quantum theory, how quantum theory interfaces with your theory. Yes. So is there any way you can make that more simple to me? Well, quantum theory per se isn't that simple. Mm. But my quantum theory is very simple because it's very sexy. Okay. So... <laughs> I don't see how that follows. <laughs> of course, sex isn't simple. Sex. Yeah. Okay. But the thing is that what it is is that if you're trying to teach a subject it's much better if you can use models and images that people are really comfortable yes, with and, 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 and relate to. Mm. And what I'm saying is that if, you're, if, you've, if you completely push aside the feminine form, it's rather like in the whole of our society, women have been pushed to one side, okay? Priests rather than priestesses. God the Father, God the Son, mm. and God the Holy Mackerel. I mean, what happened, you know, the Holy Ghost, I mean. What happened to, <laughs> you know, what happened to, God the mother. What happened to God the daughter? Do you